Welcome to you who are joining us online today. We are delighted that you're worshiping with us. Our New Testament reading comes to us from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, beginning with verse number one. Listen once again to the word of God. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Do you ever want to go home? For many years, our son Nathan participated in my last church's annual mission trip to Maine. And for many years, Deb and I would drive him up to Maine. One year, we drove him to Maine uh, by way of Canada, which was a little bit out of the way, but we wanted to go and visit Toronto and Montreal, and we had a wonderful time. We toured the Hockey Hall of Fame, attended a Blue Jays game, visited a beautiful cathedral, and walked through a market that had a distinctive bohemian ambiance. As I said, we had a wonderful time. When we were coming back, right after we passed through immigration, from the back seat, Nathan says, casually, just in passing, well, it's good to be home. Now, he was, of course, talking about our return to the States, but without realizing it, I think, he also articulated something very, very important about us. He, he put into words this deep yearning or desire or need that we seem to carry with us wherever, wherever we go, and that is the need to be home. Many years ago, I listened as a runaway told her story. She had left her family and was now living on the streets of our city. The interviewer asked this 16-year-old girl, what do you think these runaway children are looking for? And without hesitation, she said, someone to care about them, someone to love them. And there we have it again, a, a reference to home. Uh, that yearning, that desire, that need for home. What is home? Home is that place, that community, that network of relationships where we feel safe and accepted and loved. Do you ever want to go home? Home is at the heart of this morning's New Testament reading. John is writing to Christians in what we today call Turkey. These Christians are suffering persecution because of their faith. They are hurting. They are afraid. They do not feel accepted. They do not feel safe. But one day, John tells them, one day, God will bring about a new heaven and a new earth and remember, he tells them, remember, God's home is among you. God will dwell with you. God will be your God, and you will be God's people. God's home is not in some far distant place, uh, removed from the precarious existence of human life. Uh, no, John says, see, the home of God is among mortals. Home is that place, that community, that network of relationships where we feel safe and accepted and loved. What does this tell us about God? Do any of you remember J.P. Richardson? Anyone in the choir remember J.P. Richardson? Any? Nobody remembers J.P. Richardson? Now, do any of you remember the Big Bopper? Oh, thank you, thank you, Judy. The Big Bopper was a DJ in the 1950s, and he released a hit that became very, very popular. It was called Chantilly Lace. 
Now you get it, right? Uh, I thought about singing it for you this morning, but then I thought again. <laughs> On February 3rd, no way. On February 3rd, 1959, the Big Bopper, J.P. Richardson, Buddy Holly, and Richie Valens were killed when their charter plane crashed outside of Clear Lake, Iowa. They were the big names on this rock and roll tour called the Winter Dance Party. The tour was arduous. Temperatures plunged below zero. The heater on their bus stopped working. One of the members of the band even developed frostbite on the bus. What made the tour even more difficult for J.P. Richardson and Buddy Holly is that both of their wives were pregnant. And they both missed being with their wives. J.P. Richardson Jr. was born three months after his father died. He grew up wanting to know more and more about the father he never met. He spoke to Waylon Jennings, who was one of the original guitar players for the crickets. He spoke to anyone and everyone who could tell him about his daddy. And then finally he spoke to the DJ Bob Hale. Bob explained that in the winter of 1959, his wife was also pregnant. One evening, the big barber went up to Bob's wife and, and had an unusual request. J.P. Richardson Sr. said, may I, may I put my hand on your stomach? And then he added, this is what I miss most about my life on the road. I miss feeling my child kick. When he heard these words, J.P. Richardson Jr. began to cry. The tears flowed down and he said, I'm trying to find out who my dad is. And now I know that my daddy loved me before I was ever born. Loved me before I was ever born. JP was talking about his father, but he was also telling us something important about our God. God loves us with a deep and abiding passion, a passion that was burning long before any of us were ever born. Where does God want to be? Where is God's home? Among us. Here. And if God makes God's home among us here, what does that say about who we are together? I love superhero movies. But when I first heard about the Guardians of the Galaxy a few years ago, I had very, very low expectations. I could not have been more wrong. The acting and the character development were marvelous. And the story was both hilarious and touching. The Guardians are an eclectic group of heroes. One is a genetically and mechanically enhanced feisty raccoon by the name of Rocket. And another is a sentient tree creature by the name of Groot. And Groot only speaks three words. I am Groot. Groot, are you glad that we're having our first senior luncheon in years today? I am Groot. Groot, aren't you delighted that the choir is back with us on Sunday morning? I am Groot. No matter what you would ask him, no matter the conversation, he would always say, I am Groot. As the movie races to its conclusion, our five heroes find themselves on a doomed spacecraft. It is hurtling toward a planet, and they know that very soon the five of them will be vaporized in the planet's atmosphere. And then something amazing happens. Groot grows vines and limbs that reach out and encase his four other beloved friends. And Rocket, the, the raccoon, is beside himself, inconsolable. No, Groot, you can't do this. You can't. You'll die. You'll die. Why, Groot? Why are you doing this? And Groot says, we are Groot. Home is that place, that community, that network of relationships where we feel safe, accepted, 
and love. When we know that God's home is among us, when we know that God has claimed us before we were ever born, our eyes are opened and we look upon one another no longer as strangers or friends, we look upon one another as indeed brothers and sisters who come home together. We are grouped. As COVID has viscerally reminded us, we need one another. That lesson was seared in our memories on 9-11. That day was horrific, but at least we knew. At least we still had one another. But two and a half years ago, the pandemic disrupted our lives. Our apartments became isolation booths. Our physical interactions with others screeched to an abrupt halt. Human touch became a memory. Simple things we had taken for granted were suddenly snatched away. Uh, having friends over for a birthday party, going out to lunch with a colleague, going to the theater, going to school, going to work, going to church, and sitting beside a good friend on Sunday morning, uh, going into the church house lobby, cup in hand, cookie in mouth, laughing with one another. COVID denied us the very thing we need to get through a crisis, one another. But yes, Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, thankfully kept us somewhat connected. And I do believe that an online community is authentic. But our interaction in the virtual world of technology stirred up an awareness within many of us, I think, that we need one another. This awareness that just simply being together is a gift. Our struggle over the past two and a half years with COVID has awakened us to our restless need for home. And home is that place, that community, that network of relationships where we feel accepted and safe and loved. For several years, I served a large church in Pennsylvania. We averaged about five or 600 member people on Sunday mornings. And with so many people, I had trouble keeping track of who was a visitor and who was a longtime member. But one Sunday I looked up and in the very back in front of me was a couple that I, I knew I had never seen them before. I, I knew it. So I made a point to speak with them after the worship service that day. Uh, Reverend Vaughn, we want to join your church. Would you come see us this week? I'm glad to. Be glad to. I got their address, their telephone number, called them up, made an appointment, and I visited them that week. We sat down and they said, we want to join the church, but we have to tell you, we can't go to the new member classes. And we'll probably never be able to worship with you again on a Sunday morning. The husband was dying of cancer, and his time was very, very short. He wanted to join the church, and he wanted to be baptized. Can you help us out? Of course. I made arrangements to go back a few days later. I called two of the elders on session, and I explained the situation, and I said, would you please go back with me when we baptize him? Absolutely be glad to go. And so that Wednesday morning around 1030, we showed up at their house. We sat down in their living room and they presented us with coffee and dessert. And we ate and we chatted for an hour. They told us about his diagnosis and the progression of the disease and how limited his time was. They talked about their children and how they delighted over their grandchildren. They describe their love, their passion for being together and getting in their RV and traveling all over the country. And after we had been there for an hour, I said, it's time to baptize you. 
The wife went into the kitchen and broke, brought back a cereal bowl full of water and sat it down on a table in front of me. And I said, let us pray. We prayed and then I asked him the questions that have been asked of believers for 2,000 years. Do you renounce power and its place in the world? I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I do. And I scooped up a handful of water and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And may the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. And that day over coffee and cookies with a small bowl of water, we had church. And we celebrated the good news that this man too is loved by God and had been loved by God even before he was born. What was he looking for? What did he want? We can call it home. He yearned to know that he was not alone, that his life had meaning and purpose. He yearned to know that God knew him and loved him. He was looking for that which so many, many people in our city are looking to find. Home. And so this is a question I want to leave with you today. Can we be that kind of home for our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in our community? Can we join with them in saying, we are a group? Can we go where they are, where they hurt, and invite them to participate in the life of this wonderful congregation? Home is that place, that community, that network of relationships where we feel safe, accepted, and loved. My friends, welcome to Madison Avenue Presbyterian Church. Welcome home.